Hello everyone, Luke here, welcome back to the channel. So, as some of you guys might know, I've done a few videos on the heating properties of our ink, and they have been awesome. But, to take that one step further, imagine actually having a small radiator that you, well, any size radiator that you can literally just paint and hang up on your wall. So the material that I'm actually going to paint our conductive ink onto is this clear sheet of acrylic. So my heater isn't going to get above 40 degrees and this is good up to about 220 degrees. So this is going to do it very, very nicely. So the glass is going to go over the top to protect all of the electronics. That way you're not going to be able to touch anything or shock yourself. So let's crack on. And before we actually start this video, there's one thing I have to say because we actually work with electronics and that is, this video is for educational and research purposes. So with that out of the way, let's continue on. Righty, -o. so before we steam ahead and start setting this up, I just want to go through the stuff that you're actually going to need. So the first thing is a rocker switch. And because I'm in the UK, this is rated up to 230 volts at 16 amps, so I know that this is going to be absolutely perfect. Then what we're going to need is one of these, and this is a thermal couple, and this is rated up to 40 degrees Celsius, so once it hits 40 degrees, it will automatically cut it out and it won't go hotter than that. So that is what I'm going to be using here. Next, we're going to need a plug. This one has a 10 amp fuse in it, which should be more than enough. We're going to need some masking tape some copper tape and this is about an inch thick and last but not least some of our conductive ink so now we've got everything that we actually need to crack on with this project the first thing that i'm going to do is actually start marking this out and i'll show you exactly how i do that now <clears throat> okay so the first thing that we want to do with this piece of glass is to give it a nice good clean so i've got some ipa wipes here which is actually IPA is a really nice glass cleaner because it likes to dry quite quickly and it doesn't like to leave streaks. So I'm just going to give it a once over of a bit of IPA. Now the surface of the glass is nice and clean, we can start off by taking our masking tape and just taping up these edges right here. Now that we've taped the edges with masking tape, it's time to apply our copper. And then from here, you just want to make sure that if you do get any sort of wrinkles or crinkles inside of this, you just want to give it a once over with either your nail, or I'm actually using just a bit of cardboard um, with a nice flat edge so I can actually give it a rub. So now that this side is done, it's time to do the other. Okay, so there's many ways that you can now go on from here, but the idea I'm going to go for is a sort of a ladder formation. That means we'll have a strip of ink, 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 going all the way down to the bottom. But there's many ways that you can do this. You can have it as one big blob, you can have it as two big blobs. You can get really creative with it. But I think that the ladder formation is going to be a little bit more efficient, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so before we start setting this up, there's one thing that I need to do, and that is take off these two pieces of excess copper tape at the very top, because we need to run a line of masking tape at the top right here. That way we can get our ladder formation really easily, and it should be really easy to measure that out as well. So I'm just gonna cut this off. Okay, so now that's been all marked out, it's actually time to tape this up. And as you can see, I've put X's and ticks, and that just means which parts I need to tape up. So this bit is an X, so I don't do this piece. This bit is a tick, so I do tape this piece. This bit is an X, so I don't tape that piece, and I go all the way down to the bottom. So let's do it. And there we go, that is completely set up for painting now. So, let's get it painted. And there we go, that's our ink dry. And there's around two coats on this, and our, it gave us a resistance reading of around 77 ohms, which is right in the region of where we want to be. And we can figure out the amp draw on this by taking a look at Ohm's Law. So we can do 230 divided by 77, and that's going to give us an amp draw of around 2.9 amps, which is not bad. So. Let's take all of this tape off and see how it looks. There we go, I've taken all the masking tape off and this thing looks absolutely beautiful. I can't believe how nicely this has turned out. So now we're actually onto a little bit more of a difficult part and that is trying to figure out how this is all going to get wired up. Okay, so there's one more thing that I want to mention before I show you the circuit diagram and you're going to have to wait, but that is, when you're applying the conductive ink, you want to make sure that you give it a nice even coat. Otherwise, if it's not even, you're going to get hot spots and cold spots, and that's not really what you want. 
So it's actually time to connect this circuit together. So here is the diagram on the screen now. So that circuit is going to be relatively easy to connect up. I think the only thing I'm really going to have trouble with is keeping them wires nice and neat, making sure that they're out of sight, out of mind. So I think what I'm going to do is connect this up. We now. need something to actually put this onto so it can stand in an upright position. You can obviously mount this anywhere, but I want this to be movable. So what I've done here is I've built a base. So it's actually really simple how I made this. It's basically a strip of builder's board or Sintra board with a couple of feet on the bottom. And then I built this around, which is actually wide enough for both pieces of glass. That way it just slips on like so. And then this foot gets secured right here. That way it will actually be able to stand on its own. So let's actually get this finished. And there we go, that's our heater completed. I have to tell you something, that looks absolutely beautiful. So. I don't really want to plug this straight into the wall because I don't know how it's going to perform. So I've got one of these and this is a Variac. I've got it plugged in and it's currently set at 20 volts. So let's see what it does. And there we go, after a few minutes we got a result of around 22.6 degrees which isn't bad at all. So let's try it on 30 volts. 30 volts, 23 degrees. 40 volts, 25.7 degrees and I can feel the heat off it now. 50 volts, 27 degrees. <laughs> and at 60 volts, we got 30.2 degrees Celsius. <laughs> and at 70, we got 37 degrees. Okay. So there's no point me going above 70 volts on this because we're hitting 37 degrees and it's gonna cut out at 40 degrees Celsius anyway. So what happened? <laughs> well, it heated up. Mm -hmm. Uh, it got to 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. What uh, was the voltage? It was 70 volts. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that ink is super conductive. Hey? For it, sure. It's actually quite difficult to handle because um, to get the kind of resistance that you need to take it up to 240 volts, you're putting on really thin layers. Yes, yes, indeed. They, they are difficult to do, okay, without a doubt. Now, it, it's not, I mean, we make the ink as a conductive ink. Yes. We don't make it as a heating ink. No. You can use it for heating. For sure. It does the job, okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the bigger the panel, the better it's going to be because the resistance is going to go up. So a little yeah. panel like that, it's got a high resistance. It does. Now what happens with most materials is when you heat them up, they get more conductive. Yeah. That's kind of a problem. So what they normally do with heating applications is they add this stuff. Manganese dioxide. Manganese dioxide. Manganese dioxide has a negative thermal coefficient of expansion. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what that means is, as these heat up, they get less resistive. Sorry, they get more resistive. That so the sense. ink is getting less resistive, this is getting more resistive, and it reaches a balance, and you aim for that balance of the temperature that you want. Okay. So if you're um, trying to make a heating element out of conductive ink, then you've got uh, our conductive ink because yeah. our conductive ink is so conductive. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, you need to do several things. Oh, you can use a transformer. So if you plug it into the mains, you can use a, a, like a 24 volt transformer. And then you'd be able to do a little panel. Yeah, just like that one yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it caught, caught the eye actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> could stick a transformer on it and hold the voltage down and the little panel like that would just Jim Dandy. Lovely. Do it on a battery. I mean, that would work from a 12 volt battery. 12 volt battery, it'll, it'll Easily. warm up. Yeah, yeah, it'd make things like seed trays, beer keg warmers, uh, pet trays, all that sort of stuff. Lovely. Just from a battery, it'd be a mobile application. Nice. If you made a big one, where you're plugging in a large one, you could plug it straight into the mains because the resistance would have been enough. You've got to remember your Ohm's law of E equals IR. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, the main supply is an AC supply, but because this is a resistive element only, there's no induction, inductive element involved in it, Ohm's law can be applied to it because it's a good estimate. Normally you need to think about impedance and not resistance. Yes. But on yes. resistive supplies, it's fine to apply Ohm's law. But if you really want to turn our ink into an all singing, all dancing application heating ink, you're going to have to add manganese dioxide. If you want to use our conductive ink to make heating elements, you're going to have to um, make them small, run them on batteries, make them large and plug them in, or make them small and plug them in through a transformer. But, I mean, the thing worked beautifully, actually. It, really it heated did. quickly, didn't it? It really did. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, I thought I'd just let you know that, mate, because I, I know you don't know that. And yeah. it, it is something I think we ought to explore a bit further. And, oh, 100%. You know, if people are interested in a heating ink, I guess we could produce a heating ink. But uh, certainly, I think a few experiments, adding some of this to our ink. And to, see what happens. There you go. Lovely. <laughs> All right, mate. Oh, nice okay. work, eh? Thank Lovely you. work. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rob. No worries, mate. <laughs> And there we go, it worked absolutely lovely. There's many applications that you can use this for and just like Rob suggested, we'll do a video on that later on. But with that being said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you later.